Hello everyone, welcome to our continuing lecture in the contemporary world. Today, we will discuss a bit of history of globalization and clarify some information that you brought out in our FB classrooms. I will not attempt to contest your opinions, but as your teacher, um, I would require you to read a lot and understand the events that are going on. As students of the contemporary world, you should be aware of current issues that affect all of us including the issues that are important to you and you are directly affected with because you will engage in national conversations in social media on social media platforms within your circle of friends and your family members among the current issues that that you need to look into are the vaccination plan the surging cases of new covid-19 variant the economic problems that we are facing brought about by the, the restrictions of movement and even look at issues on the level of our local government. We have been talking about the concept of globalization as the main idea of our discussions and you have found many definitions of the term from different aspects and different experts and you have been vocal in your answers that this would not have been or this would not have had a good impact especially in our culture. To cite some of your answers
I am not saying that these are wrong and right answers. How you view issues remains to be your right of free expressions, and this right will be cemented further by your solid knowledge and sound judgment on the issues. So keep on reading, study our history, challenge the idea, questioned and questionable. In so doing, you will be best prepared for the challenges of the 21st century. The 21st century requires all of us to be communicative, to have critical thought, collaborative, and creative. All of these can be acquired by exposing ourselves or yourselves to the challenges in your life, not just as students of sight, but students of life. In so doing, you will gain a better perspective of the world you live in. I won't blame you if you take the idea of globalization as something to be afraid of. Those were also the feeling of the Samarians in Mesopotamia or Iraq, when they traded with the settlers of the Indus Valley for materials in creating jewelry in 3000 BCE or before Common Era. Trading is always a staple food in globalization. If we discuss globalization, often than not, it points out to economic aspect. Most of the trading took place in the waters. Example, in Mesopotamia, the area between the Tigris and the Euphrates River, which is referred as the cradle of civilization. Of course, trading also involved long-distance travels on land. It was expanded because of the desire for imperial power. In China, near the end of the 2nd century BCE, Emperor Wu of Han Dynasty had been in constant battle with the invaders who raided their settlements, leading him to look for a new source of horses for his cavalry. This led to the establishment of the Silk Road. This is the Silk Road. Contrary to what people think that this is a singular route, the Silk Road was actually a network of routes and not just one road connected the East and the West or the Eurasia. From China to Rome in the 2nd century BCE to the 18th century. And it is always attributed as the first wave of globalization. Silk, which is China's greatest gift to the world, was introduced to the Western people along with paper making and porcelain. Wools, gold, grapes, glasses, and silver went east. Christianity, which was prevailing in Western Europe, also helped in the expansion of the silk market. Churches stored silks in the treasuries as a form of wealth. The Silk Road, which is about 6,400 kilometers, um, crossed some of the most difficult places. But aside from commodities, it also resulted in exchange of technology the arts, culture, religion, and philosophy. Along the road, people from many different civilizations got to meet each other, and the results were extraordinary. Religions, in particular, were spread along the road, and this is how, for example, Buddhism traveled from India to China. Technology was also disseminated via the Silk Road, including the Chinese inventions of paper and gunpowder, architecture, town planning, as well as music and art from many different cultures were transported along the Silk Road. The Silk Road also spread diseases, especially the Black Death or the Bubonic Plague in 1300s, killing as many as half of all Europeans within seven years. The Silk Road was successful, but only two great empires dominated much of the route. If trade was interrupted, it was most often because of blockades of local enemies of either Rome or China. If you're interested in this long history, you can read about it in the internet or in the papers published in Google Scholar. Remember, critical thought should allow you to question information and do fact check. Many authors, however, contested that globalization as we come to know now did not take place in Silk Road but right at our own very backyard. It all began 500 years ago when Father Andres de Ordoneta, a survivor of one Spanish expedition to the Philippines, was requested by King Philip II of Spain to return to the Philippines from Mexico with Miguel Lopez de Legazpi and find the Torna Viaje or way back. It was Ordoneta who found the Torna Viaje in 1565, bringing to the West goods from China initially the silk. 
from here evolved what is still the longest trade route in the history of the world. 250 years of shipping between Manila and Acapulco. And from Acapulco to the rest of the Spanish America, terminating and beginning again in Western Europe. The trade impacted on all the economies along the way. This was the Manila Galleon trade. Spanish ships came to Manila, connecting Asia, America, and Europe for the first time in a single commercial route. The Galleon trade went on from 1565 to 1815, every year without a break. The majority of goods from the Philippines that were brought to Mexico and Europe came from China. They included silk, porcelain, furniture, fans, paintings, and other fine goods. In return, the Spaniards brought silver and spices to the Chinese. Later, the exchange would involve not only goods but also ideas, technology, science, and culture. Manila was already an entry pot to which goods are brought for import and export, cotton, abaca, indigenous fabrics. Remember that the Philippines had already been engaged in trade relations with Borneo, Cambodia, China, India, Japan, the Moluccas or Indonesia, and Siam or Thailand, even before the Spanish came. Silver was used as a medium of exchange. However, both Silk Road and the Galleon trade have ended because of the technological advancement in transportations and trading. But it suffices to say that globalization has been there since time immemorial. Some may find the concept negative and oppressive, while some would find globalization as a positive concept or irreversible. In the case of Galleon trade, the Filipinos aging 16 to 60 were forced to render work otherwise. They will be asked to pay. Or the tobacco monopoly, when we became the largest tobacco producer in Asia, many farmers who were forced to meet the quota suffered severely due to unfair practices of the Spanish um, colonization. This is probably why we can't blame people who look at globalization negatively. To have a common understanding of the term globalization, we use Manfred Steger's definition as our baseline because it is the most objective and unbiased definition. Steger defines globalization as the expansion and intensification of social relations and consciousness across world time and world space. It is a multidimensional phenomenon involving economics, politics, culture, ideology, environment, and technology which we will tackle in the next sessions. Globalization is a process and a condition. Every day, we knowingly or unknowingly experience the worldwide movement of people, ideas, money, goods, data, drugs, weapons, computer and biological viruses, greenhouse gases, and more. We already know that this is not new. What is new is the scale, the velocity, the range of these flows across borders. The intensification or intensification and expansion are really tremendous. Look at your smartphone and think about global coordination it took to produce. The interconnectedness of the world allows ideas, behaviors, style, products, and news to spread more quickly and broadly than during any other period of history since television was invented. Globalization effects are complex. What represents an upside for some people might represent a downside for others. Technology, for example, allows billions of people to contact friends and access news from around the world. International supply chains, the networks that turn raw materials into finished items, produce and distribute uh, goods more quickly and cheaply. Take a look at iPhone that says it is designed in California. The battery is from South Korea through Samsung. The audio chips are from US. The camera is done by Sony in Japan and everything assembled in China. Even some chips are made in the Philippines, in Minibaya or Mitsumi. Ford's Lyman car is designed in Germany. It's a gearing system produced in Korea, pump in US, and engine in Australia. That is exactly the technological advancement that has made this type of global production possible. For example, Japan's Nissan car assembly operation for Almira in Laguna, which, by the way, was closed last this January due to pandemic, leaving 100, 100 plus Filipinos jobless. 
the said company produces 4,000 cars in 2019. The pace of technological innovation has also led to the automation of manufacturing processes which eliminates jobs, global exports and imports of goods each multiplied more than 50 times more imports lead to increased consumer choices and reduce prices and more trade can strengthen ties between trading partners and promote peace, security and growth. But more trade opportunities and technological advances or advancement would mean many corporations choose to shift their operations to countries where the labor and natural resources are lower or cheaper, and the individuals and companies that take advantage of international resources experience uh, gains, overblown gains, which widens the growing gap between the rich and the poor. Some of you have noted this explicitly during the uh, Facebook answers. Finally, the effects of globalization, both negative and positive, are a reality. No one can opt out entirely. No one can sign out. But governments have made options for responding. They can choose how open or close they want to be towards trade, investment, visitors, immigrants, refugees, internet traffic, and more. Governments can also contend with globalization through collective rather than national responses. A set of international institutions and other arrangements um, has emerged to manage globalization. Some countries view globalization as a threat to local identity. You noted this one before. Culture and social and political norms. No country can be entirely self-sufficient. We have to admit that. We cannot be protectionist. Uh, we cannot isolate ourselves. The challenge is, therefore, for individual government and the world collectively to promote globalization's benefits while effectively helping the individuals and countries that globalization hurts the most.